So recently I did a video on talking about finance for law firms. And after going through that video a little bit more, what I realized is there are some things that are a little unique about different types of firms. And as I've been working with different types of law firms, and I realized like, you know, we should probably come back and have another discussion and really drill down a little bit more, talk about some of the things that are unique. So this video, we're going to be talking about uh, the finance for family law practices. So if you are a family law um, firm or your family lawyer, this is definitely the topic for you. Now, before I get into it, if you, um, for those that aren't familiar with who I am, um, my, I'm Terrell Turner, a CPA. My background is accounting and finance. Um, I run my own accounting firm, the TL Turner Group where we focus on bookkeeping and CFO services for our clients. We work with um, a lot of law firms. We work with service-based businesses. And that is where we tend to really focus our attention. Because what we have done is we've worked in a lot of different organizations our, ourselves and really gained a lot of insight. And for a lot of the stuff that we do, we do provide a lot of free content on mediums like this, where we do videos like this and do different series through um, a company we've created called the Business Talk Library, where we have a ton of content there. We share that a lot, really to help a lot of business owners, because one of our philosophies is, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily need to hire us because what you may need is you just may need a little bit of information or a little bit of direction heading the right, you know, head, you know, make sure you're headed in the right direction. And so we like to provide that. And then there are some that, you know, they need more of the hands on. They need a little bit more of like some specific information. So we provide some paid training courses for people that need that. And then there are some that say, hey, we just really need someone to come in to really help with this. And that's where we get into doing the bookkeeping as well as the CFO services. Our firm has been recognized in the New York Times in 2021. Um, and I'm personally, I'm also a 40 under 40 black CPA recognized in 2021 as well. So back to today's topic. Today's topic is finance for family law. Now, there are some things that are unique about family law. And what you will find is some of these things are applicable no matter what type of firm you have, just any type of law firm. But the first one is really going to be performance, what I like to call performance perspective. And what this is, is really looking at, you know, different ways of looking at the financial performance of your business. Because a lot of family law firm owners, what they do is they look at, hey, we did X amount of revenue this month. We did, you know, 40000 this month. We did 80000 And some clients, are, you know, we did 400000 but one of the questions I always ask them is, okay, can we take that a step further? What if we started looking at your revenue by practice area? Like what sub practice area within family law? Because you may be doing custody. You may be doing modifications. You may be doing uncontested divorce, contested divorces. Like which type of cases are actually bringing in the revenue? So when we take your overall revenue number, let's break it down a level. Like, what is that? And when they start to look at it that way, it starts to bring on, you know, new ideas and it starts to help them to, to think about things a little bit differently. And one of the things that it helps them understand is how they're spending their marketing dollars. Because if you know that a lot of your revenue is coming from custody cases, then you go back and you look at your marketing and then like, where are you? What types of cases, like what types of, of, of content or information are you putting in your marketing material? And are you attracting, hey, the right type of client that you want? And then one of the other ways to look at it from an internal management standpoint is looking at, okay, what staff members, which associates, which paralegals are generating the revenue? Like who on the team? is generating the revenue and how much are they generating? Because that becomes another helpful indicator that could lead you to some other tools that we've created for some of some of the clients are the, around like an ROI calculator or helping them understand, are you getting the right return on, hey, you know, the, the staff members, are you giving them the right targets and different things like that? So really looking at your performance 
not just at the total firm level, but breaking it down and getting different perspectives on your performance because it's going to give you different insight. Now, another one that becomes very important. Now, this becomes important from a ethical, a logical, and a, I guess you say, a a practice from a, a bar standpoint as well is, you know, trust accounting. Trust accounting is not something that is very common outside of, you know, law firms or types of businesses that work on retainer or take retainers in advance. And so when it comes down to trust accounts, there has to be this three-way reconciliation process. Whereas, you know, in your law firm management system, you'll have your report will say, hey, this is what's in your trust account. And it'll be able to break it down by person who that money belongs to. And then when you go over to your bank account, the question is, hey, does that number tie to your bank account? And then from your bank account, then we look at your financial statements. Does that number tie to your financial statements? Like, is that the same number I'm going to see when I look at your balance sheet? And then, like I said, all of those should reconcile. Now, of course, there may be some differences due to timing, but one of the things we should be able to do is explain those differences. Now, if you're working with a really good bookkeeper, they are doing this. Now, if you're not working with a bookkeeper and this is not being done, this is probably an area where I would say, hey, there needs to be some attention here because you want to make sure that your trust account stays intact because that could present issues with your relationship with the clients that can also present cash flow issues for your business. And it could present issues with the bar in your state. So you want to make sure that this three-way reconciliation is something that is happening regularly in your business. Now, the last one that I would want to look at are, you know, factors in setting financial targets. This one is a very important one because I think not a lot of law firms actually get to this level where they're looking at, okay, how are you actually setting your financial targets? Because I've come across a lot of law firms when they ask them like, okay, all right, how much, you know, how much money do you want to make? And they throw out a number. It's like, okay, all right, what do you need to do to get there? And a lot of times they don't really know. It's just like, hey, I just need to work more cases. And they're working, working, working really hard. But One of the things that we do is we take a step back and say, okay, all right, you know what, what would achieving that goal really look like? And that's where we get into some of the, like I said, in the CFO side of really looking at things like this is really looking at those factors that play a role into creating that financial target. So when you actually walk through this, where we look at kind of average case value, we look at average case hours and average case time where we start looking at those things along with some of the perspective financial metrics that we talked about in the first tab. When you start looking at all of that, you can bring all of that together to really sum it down to where like, hey, I have clarity on if I'm going to hit my financial goal, I know what my individual targets in different areas need to be to be able to deliver on it but you're going to have to get a little bit deeper into your finances and the financial data. And I'll be honest, this is where a little bit of strategy comes in because this is a combination of your financial data as well as your law firm management data, like your client level data, being able to bring those two together to understand this level of detail. But I promise you, when you get this level of understanding, it definitely makes the light bulb go off like you wouldn't believe. And so I think these three areas are very, very, very critical. The perspective on the financials, as well as, you know, getting your three-way match and make sure you get that clear. And then also the factors for setting your financial target. Now, One of the things that I also like to do is I like to tell when I'm working with lawyers, I always like to tell them that there is a phenomenal resource that I found um, that I think that will help any law firm. And that is a book by Chris and David called, you know, Up Level Your Business, Up Leveling Your Life. It is a phenomenal book. It is an easy, it's a quick read. I think it is something that will help law firms 
across the board. Kristen David is extremely familiar with law law firms as she, you know, she used to run a law firm and she grew it. She doubled it and sold it. And she is really dedicated to helping law firm and understand the business side of running a law practice. And speaking of that, one of the things that Kristen has done is, in, is establish an organization called up, up Leveling Your Business. And Up Leveling Your Business has an amazing coaching program that really does work with law firm owners and it really helps them kind of lay out a plan so there's more clarity and going through that plan. And I would say, in all transparency, one of the ways that I met Kristen is, is like I said, my background is accounting and finance. We got to talking with some of the things that I do. I also help with some of the financial controls coaching in the UIB coaching program. But there are other aspects of it that I always tell people is running a business is more than just your service and the money. There's a lot of other things in between, like the marketing, the sales. Also, how do you take care of your clients and how do you manage your team? And Kristen has done an amazing job with UIB of having a phenomenal coaching program that really helps lawyers really shore up a lot of those areas and get some systems and processes in place and some accountability for getting things in order so that you can move your law firm forward. And then, of course, for my firm, the T.L. Turner Group, we also provide the bookkeeping and the CFO support. As I said, when you get into really navigating the decisions of your business, you want to make sure that you have clean and clear data. So when you're making those business decisions, that you have good financial data to make your decisions on. So if you're a law firm, if you own a family law practice, definitely rewatch this video. I mean, and leave some questions in the comments because we always love, you know, checking out the questions and trying to revise the videos or creating new videos to answer or address questions and reaching out to people. And if you're looking for, like I said, really taking your firm to the next level, I really highly advise you reach out to up leveling your business and really reach out to them, find out their resources. If you're looking for a bookkeeper specifically for that aspect of your business or CFO services, reach out to just leave me a comment in the, the video or send me a message on whatever platform you see this on. And as always, thanks for tuning in.